Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Onboards and the Rated Replays. Uh, in these replays I'm going to hopefully be giving you um, an idea of how a high level player plays in World of Warplanes by analyzing my decision making and my play in a sort of stream of consciousness manner across the top of the replay. Um, hopefully that should have some benefit to you guys. If you have any questions or comments please let me know on what labs. Um, if you're wondering about my credentials, I'm a Rank 15th according to win rate on uh, Noob Mater on the North American server. I have a 79% win rate. Um, took a bit of a knock on the head after some solo pubbing lately. And I'm a member of Team Potato. So I um, I have quite a bit of experience in this game and I'm pretty good. I joined in closed beta and I've played ever since. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Spitfire Mark V. The Spitfire Mark V is a hybrid turn energy fighter. It's a uh, pretty good plane. It's British Tier 6 light fighter. It's moderately quick, 620 kilometers an hour uh, at best altitude. It's not fantastic, but it's all right. It's got a rate of climb of 20.3, which is perfectly reasonable and respectable at the tier, and an optimum altitude of 1,300 meters, which also isn't too bad. The problem is that above that optimum altitude, it begins to lose its performance pretty quickly, so it's kind of restricted to around 2,000, 2,500 meters in terms of performance band. Where it really shines is it's time to turn. Turns is uh, 360 degrees in 17 seconds, which is in tier is beaten only by the Russian and Japanese planes. It can outturn more or less anything else. Uh, its rate of roll is pretty anemic, but that's not too much of a problem. Generally speaking, all it does is serve to make the aircraft a little more stable. Firepower wise, the aircraft's pretty good. Um, Take a look at the uh, the weapons here. Uh, you'll also note that I don't actually have the top engine on this aircraft. I just haven't got around to getting it yet. It doesn't make too much difference to the aircraft. It gives you a bit more top speed. It means you can chase Mustangs up a bit further. But as far as the style of play, it doesn't make too much of a radical difference. Uh, I have the 20mm Hispano cannons and the 4303 Browning machine guns. These complement each other really nicely. The uh, 20mm Hispanos have a rate of fire of 600 uh, rounds a minute and a muzzle velocity of 860, while the machine guns have a rate of fire of 600 and a muzzle velocity of 850. They fire uh, synchronously, meaning that you don't have to worry about fiddling with your aim in order to make sure your cannons or your machine guns hit. Both of them do a pretty good job. Now the machine guns don't do a hell of a lot of damage, but that's not really a problem because they're not the primary damage dealers in this. The auto cannons do overheat quite quickly, but they're, uh, they do quite a lot of damage as well, so they're reasonably good for the tier. Uh, Service-wise, I fitted this thing with high explosive 20 millimeter rounds um, to basically maximize my ability to do damage at range, uh, and also to maximize my ability to fire up. Uh, they also are the most damaging rounds in the Spitfire Mark V, because the other option is high explosive incendiary, which are a bit crap as far as I'm concerned compared to the, the high explosive rounds, which are, you know, aside from some fire chance, which is quantifiably better. The arm piercing incendiary rounds for this are, well they're a fairly interesting round, they're, they have a 15% chance of fire and they have damage almost equivalent to the armor piercing round, they're kind of the best of both worlds between incendiary and armor piercing. Normally I would use incendiary on my secondary machine guns but I thought what well, the hell I might as well use my, um, my, uh, my, you know, armor piercing incendiary rounds if we're going to make in videos. I've got 120 octane gasoline on this thing, and no matter if you start it in a first aid package, this thing very rarely catches fire. I think it's caught fire twice in the time that I've had it, so yeah, it's not really a problem. And British air pilots tend to lose their um, lose you know lose their pilots quite a lot. The planes lose their pilots, so I like to have a first aid dressing package there, because if you lose your pilot in the middle of a melee, it can stun him and lead you crashing into a mountain or something. So I, you know, in an aircraft that's going to turn a lot, I'd rather have that. The pneumatic restarter is a must-have because if you lose your engine, you're screwed in any aircraft. And the 120 octane gasoline is the equivalent of another engine upgrade, so you know that's that kind of makes up for not having the top engine. Okay, but well that's with the setup looked at and brief characteristics of the aircraft gone over. Let's uh, let's move on to the replays. Okay, this is the first replay we're going to be looking at. You can see here I'm joined by a fellow Watt Labs contributor, Schweder. Schweder's flying a Yak-9. The Yak-9 is a very maneuverable aircraft, it's reasonably fast, and it has a very powerful 37mm gun in the nose. It's got a derp cannon. On the other side, I can see there's a couple of F4U1s and a P-51A, some Tier 5 stuff I'm not that bothered about. The main thing I'm interested in here is the F4Us and the 51A. They are very fast aircraft who are capable of keeping up with me in a climb, and they're also significantly better than I am at high altitude. So I've got to watch those aircraft, particularly the P-51A. 
we're um, we're pointing east here. We decide that we're going to climb to altitude. We're going to head over C8, and then we're going to attack any enemy aircraft we see over there. I'm initially going to go to quite high altitude to fly top cover for Schweder, because Schweder's aircraft doesn't have particularly good altitude performance. We're actually quite a low altitude flight here compared to some of the aircraft over on their team. So we uh, we climb up. The altitude you want to be at the Spit 5 is probably about 2,400, 2,500 meters. You probably don't want to be much higher than that because the aircraft starts to fly like it's in treacle. Um, you also can't turn as well as that altitude. And it makes it a bit difficult to dodge. So if you get caught out by like a, an ME 410 or a um, or anything, any kind of heavy fighter, then you're in trouble. And we can see here they're they're pinging a ground target there. That's probably one of their ground attackers. That's something we want to try and get rid of. Um, you can see that there are aircraft spotted here from the southwest and northeast, so we know we've got a fight on our hands. Schweder dives in to engage. I think about staying top cover, but I start to see more and more dots appear in the southwest, and I figure, like, what the hell, YOLO. So I dive into the uh, into the fight down here, um, figuring that there's, you know, aircraft to be killed. I discover that actually then that the aircraft that I'm diving in on are two tier fours and an LBSH, which I'm not absolutely bothered about. So I think, what the hell, might as well take advantage of this. Shoot the uh, P-36, miss him, um, because my gunnery was pretty poor there. I decide I'm going to climb on over the top and engage him. There's not a hell of a lot. I can see almost all their enemy aircraft are in the southwest. I loop over and shoot him down because for some reason he decides to strafe a warship. Overcorrect slightly with my guns there. I climb up, I um, hit my boost which is almost completely recharged and use that to get me back up to altitude because I'm currently fairly low and I'm fairly um, I'm fairly slow. I, uh, I decide I need to get back up to altitude so I get up to about 1100 meters before I stall out. Things are starting to look very messy in the southwest though, we're about to lose our ground attack aircraft and we're about to, um, we're about to lose sight on those enemy aircraft as well. We're in a slight disadvantage here and they've got supremacy. I can see that they're pinging our base in the northwest there, but the only things left are one IL, which I'm pretty sure I saw in the southwest, and the LBSH, which isn't a very effective ground attack aircraft against tier 6 targets. Besides which, there are more important stuff over here, and I figure that I can better fix the supremacy clock by going after fighters. Uh, we spot the, both of the uh, F4Us coming in, I decide that those are the biggest threat, so I go after one and Schweder goes after the other. I take a few shots, do a few to him but he decides that he's going to engage Sweater and ignore me, which gives me the opportunity to set up on his 6 o'clock, and then he decides to turn with me, which is even better. Um, once I finally get my eye in, I'm able to get shots onto him and um, eventually shoot him down. Now I'm keeping an eye on what's going on here. This is starting to turn into a fireball, so I've got to make sure that anything coming in from the outside I keep an eye on as well. And in doing that, I spot a, uh, a BF-110 coming in and taking a crack at me. <coughs> so I loop over the top, and then I make a decision which is actually a bit foolish in this context. Um, it's not the best decision I've ever made. I decided to start chasing the, the 110 because I figure, hey, it's a 110 free kill, right? He's actually carrying enough speed to get away from me if he wants to here. Um, and I'm getting further and further away from the fight. You can see here that there's only two of our aircraft against three of theirs. And if we lose one of those aircraft, we're going to lose the other one. Now, the 110 is foolish enough to let me shoot him down here, but it's carrying me a long way away from the fight, and that's not good. We've, well, one of our friendlies went back and killed the ground attacker, by the way. So I shoot him down and realize, oh shit, I better get back to my friendlies here. So I put the foot down, discover I've overheated, and think, crap. Um, speaking of which, I overheat my guns there. If you overheat your guns, for the love of God, take your finger off the trigger and let them cool down, because otherwise they'll just sputter and spurt and wouldn't do anything. Schweder deals with his friendly over there and then uh, moves in to engage the others. The Spitfire 1 starts dragging up the 110E and the, Mi uh, the Miles M20. Schweder decides he's going to hit the 109E, so I go after the M20. The M20 is pretty maneuverable, uh, and it has decent guns, but it's no match for Spit 5. So I managed to shoot the living hell out of him. I don't know what he does here, like... He doesn't continue to turn or turn into me, so he dies. And fails. I pick up the 109 on the dive, Schweder wasn't quite able to keep up with him in the climb, and I uh, take him out as he's curving around here. My gunnery sucks a little bit initially, but I'm able to actually get guns on target afterwards. Schweder and I worked pretty well together in this battle, but there were some times where we got separated, which was primarily my fault. I get myself lost about halfway through the battle, so just bear in mind when enemies are dragging you away from friendlies, because you need to find yourself in a whole world apart when that happens. Okay, this is the second replay we're going to have a look at. You can see that we're joined by one of my... Uh, Clanmates, Captain F-22 Ace. 
Ace is flying a 109F, I'm flying a Spit 5, and Schweder is flying a P51A. Mr. Psychic is in his A675 on the other side, uh, I'm Canadian A's in his 51A, I can see Oopman in XFL, these are the pilots that catch my attention. There is um, a preponderance of 410s, 51As and 109Fs, so a lot of high altitude power on their team. I'm a little worried about that fi that high altitude firepower, that's um, something I will struggle to deal with a little bit because I can't climb with them. I have to take those 51As out reasonably quickly and I also need to be able to take out the uh, 410s relatively quickly. Oopman's uh, XFL has a very, very nasty gun on it, so I don't want that to get behind me in a fight, and I don't particularly want to, um, I don't particularly want to find myself under the guns of either of those 410s either. So the plan we have here is we're going to go down the 8 line, we're going to engage um, enemy aircraft altitude, there's only one ground attacker on their team, I'm not too bothered about that, uh, I'm more interested in taking out their 51s and 410s. Um, enemies appear about this point, we see a 410 appear and then he rather ingloriously ends himself by slamming into our 190A5 which is a bit frustrating because that's a relatively useful plane to have in the fight. We start to see uh, enemy aircraft appear in front of us now, there's a P40 is going to pop up on our screen here in just a second. But we decide that probably isn't the major threat right now, we see a Spitfire Mark 1 over here, Ace agrees and we start to head over towards the Spit and the uh, Spit 5. These are two aircraft that, when co out with us, uh, can outturn us, so we don't, and we'll be dangerous of working together, so we want these guys dead. Uh, Ace takes a shot from the Spitfire 1, but rolls around him, and the Spitfire 5 decides he's going to try and engage him, so I'm able to get my guns onto him. Schweder gets his guns onto him too, and between the two of us, we shoot him down. The Spitfire 1 decides he's interested in me, but I, I loop through, essentially, and then um, invert the loop to try and throw him off. My flight mates in the meantime give him a pummeling and I'm able to finish him off when I loop over the top. Looking at my map here, things are starting to get a bit messy for our team though. I can see that our flight is our fighters are kinda all over the place. Like our flight's the only force of ours that's actually concentrated together. So I figure that actually it's probably a good time to sort the enemy out and um, bring our flight into this sort of group of enemies over here. Um, the a6M5 is flown by a relatively competent pilot, so I figure it's probably going to need to kill him. Uh, I can see there's a P-51 coming into the fight too, so I take a couple of exploratory snapshots at the A6M5 and decide to cut onto the P-51, who's engaging one of my flight mates. Now at this point, the the video kind of, the replay kind of degenerates into a into a, a furball. Now this makes decision making commentary a little bit tricky. Because when you're in a furball, like you can see I'm doing here, you need to start bouncing between targets. You can't stay fixated on one target. If I'd follow that P-51 all the way through, then um, I'd have missed the chance to snapshot that A6M5 as it was. I didn't do a very good job of it, but if I'd hit, it would have taken him out of the fight. Now here I can see that the P-51 has now screwed himself. He's low on energy, he's low on altitude, and he's turning with me, so I'm able to shoot him. Me and Schweder are able to shoot him down. I'm Canadian A joins the fight here. I know he's a good pilot, so I decide he's a priority target. I climb up. He's climbing up after a 19F, I start shooting him, but I can see Schweder has probably got more of a chance to actually do him damage than I do right now. So I climb back over and see two stalled out aircraft, including the A6M5. I can see the A6M5 is stalled out and completely screwed. Now he's a dangerous opponent in a furball, so I take the opportunity to shoot him down. In return I take a 37mm through my wing, which sucks because it means that I can't turn quite as well in the furball, so I call my friendlies in, they come through and start shooting the living hell out of the enemies and causing them to pull off me. Uh, speaking of targets of opportunity, I can see an ME-410 has popped up into the fight. The 410 is nasty aircraft because it's got those really powerful f concentrated forward firepower. I don't want him in the fight, I don't want him shooting my allies down. So as a target of opportunity, I take the opportunity to gun him down. Two aircraft have uh, gone up after Schweder there. The XFL flown by Oatman, I know that he's a good pilot and I also know that that 37mm gun is something I don't want in the fight so I take the opportunity to kill him. One on F stalls out, so I climb up to engage him. Schweder comes back down. Both of us engage him, do him a fair amount of damage. I almost crash into a friendly there. Something else you need to be aware of when you're in a dogfight is friendlies. You don't want to hit them. You've got to be really careful um, that you don't crash into people. Now, that's very difficult in a dogfight because your situational awareness is heavily taxed. You're going to be finding yourself in a situation where you get... Um, 
or you're being shot at from multiple angles, where you've got lots of enemies flying around, you have to pay as much attention to your friendlies as well, because if you don't, you're going to find yourself um, crashing into them, and that's quite bad, especially if it's a flight mate, because then you've taken two competent pilots out instead of just one. Um, so, briefly, when you're in a fireball, you want to be bouncing from target to target, you want to make sure that tar you kill targets with opportunity, don't just chase like one target around, don't get target fixated, because you're going to miss opportunities to kill enemies. Secondly, uh, call your flight mates in if you need help, make sure you're communicating closely with them. And thirdly, just be careful as you're flying around, try and maintain as good a situational awareness as possible. You can see here we went through supremacy because the opponent just vanishes, I don't know where he is. So I got a good 1700 uh, experience, 47,000 credits, my flight does pretty damn well. And I'd say that that's a reasonably good place to end. Thanks for watching guys, see you later.